Okay, so welcome to module number 5, Sports Tourism Markets, focusing on sports tourism demand. And for this specific module, we will have two videos. And for this first video, we are going to ask the question, who are the sports tourists? So basically, for this video, what we will do is try to conceptualize and categorize the different types of sports tourism based on uh, different uh, research that have been done in relation to sports tourism. Okay, so the first classification will be according to Gliptis in 1998 and according to them, there are two types of sports tourists. And the first type of sports tourist is the general dabbler who is basically the spectators during a sport and we have the spe specialist who is the participant in sport. So if you are in a sports attraction and you are engaged in the actual sport, you are a specialist. If you are just watching, you are a general dabbler according to Gliptis. Okay, so now we go to the next categorization by Hall and this is specific to active sports tourists or those tourists who are actually engage in the sport when they go to the sports attraction. And uh, according to them, there are two types of active sports tourists. The first one is activity participants, which is basically they engage in the sport for self-expression. Kasi gusto lang nila, na gusto lang magpapawis, gusto lang ng physical well-being. And there are those who are players who join the sports attraction or the sports event because they are competitors or they are competitive participants. So for example, marathoners are players and probably siguro yung mga um, who would go to ice skating sa SM for purposes of kasi gusto lang nilang ma-experience yung ice skating are activity participants. Mayer and Weber um, for, uh, have a different characterization of sports tourism and according to them, it could be um, characterized based on the intensity of the engagement uh, in relation to the sport of uh, the attraction. The first one is the top performance athletes. So, of course, these are the athletes who are actually going there for competitive sports. Top performance nga eh. So, um, so, what are the goals for the ones developing the tourism and the sport destination? Efficiency is the main aim during holidays and uh, those who are managing the event and managing the destination must ensure access to competition and suitable training conditions. Facilities are priorities for these travelers. So probably book a hotel na merong uh, wellness spa or may gym or book a hotel for them na malapit sa hospital wherein they could uh, go if there are certain um, bodily problems. So kasi yun yung issues ng top performance at least and probably book them in a hotel wherein they could um, have their practice. Diba? And ito yung isa sa mga naging issue natin with the last SEA Games. Like for example, the thigh team. Um, because of issues in relation to scheduling, nag-practice na lang sila ng football in front of their accommodation, which is of course very embarrassing. No? Um, those who are uh, organizing the tours for the top performance athlete need to give specific consideration on accommodation and dining demands. So, for example, ganun ulit, no? uh, there is also one issue in relation to the Malaysians were placed in a um, in an accommodation and then yung available nilang food during breakfast were not halal and of course we know Muslims are very particular about halal meals so dapat yung mga ganito when you are a tour operator or a tour planner for this um, uh, top athlete, athlete performance um, dapat these are taken into consideration and as well of course um Dapat, the hotel will also be able to give you mga dietary requirements that are needed by the athletes for them to perform 
uh, in their specific sports. No Access to physicians, as I said earlier, injury rehabilitation facilities, and other performance-related services. So in short, no, if there's a mega event such as the Olympics or a regional games, no, it's very important that um, the hospitals and the healthcare um, facilities are already kind of tapped so that they are already ready to prepare uh, are ready to prepare and ready to respond to the, the specific issues that some of the athletes might have in relation to engaging in the sport. The next demand group according to Meyer and Weber are mass sports. So the goal or the motivation of those who enjoy mass sports are in terms of preserving health and maintaining fitness as the aim. Um, the accessibility of holiday regions and the quality of sports facilities are the key considerations for this market segment. So, ano ang example ng mga sports attractions that are related to mass sports? Yan, for example, the Spartan Race or, for example, mga marathons or, for example, yung mga dragon boat races or kaya yung mga mountaineering. Um, this is an example of mass sports because... Um, the the intention of those who are going to this area are uh, to engage in the sport and they, of course they want to have you know a good experience and access to facilities in relation to the sport and to be engaging with other people who are like-minded and of course for the purposes of their health as well so mass sports the third demand group are the occasional sportsmen and women which basically uh, this uh, group of people their their motivations give less preference to less demanding sports such as um, recreational skiing bowling sporting activities receive no greater priority over cultural sightseeing and other interests within this market group so this group of people will engage in sport but that's not their main goal when they go to a specific destination and so therefore uh, when certain um, sports or adventure tourism attraction is offered to them syempre hindi masyadong time consuming hindi masyadong um, health consuming or uh, hindi masyadong uh, atawag dito magkakaroon ng um, impact sa body no kasi nga they have to have extra energy and extra time to do other types of cultural sightseeing kasi nga secondary lang or hindi nila main priority yung engaging in sport as a part of their whole tourism experience so examples of vocational sportsmen and women ay yung for example you go to Boracay and then you do snorkeling or you go to a certain uh, surf related beach and you incidentally go for you know a surfing lesson. So these are examples of vocational sportsmen and women demand group in action. And then we have the passive sports tourists no which is the fourth demand group and basically no individual sports activities are pursued. Um, the focus of this group it lies within mega sports events just like regional games, Olympics, Grand Prix, and distinguished sports sites such as sports museums. So these are tourists that do not um, engage no, or in uh, actual sport, but they are just there for the sport to do spectating. But also very important um, specific um, market or segment of this group is the coaches and attendance to high performance athletes. Siyempre, they won't be participating in the sport but they will be directly um, dealing with the sport itself. No, So, siyempre, yung mga assistants, attendance, media people, um, uh, who are engaged in the whole sporting event must also be taken care of and their needs should also be taken care of and of course yan yung mga issue natin in the last sea games in for instance no yung hindi nagkaroon ng maayos na transport or very poorly built yung mga media centers where in um certain sports can have their sport uh press conferences so yon uh, and it requires high volume of infrastructures to accommodate the needs of the large numbers of event sports athletes. So dito ang concern naman natin for mega events and re like regional games is that there should be um, enough accommodation at dapat naka-alert na yung mga accommodations that are high, uh, highly accessible or near the sporting facility where in sporting events are going to be done. No? And it's a good thing then not to already engage them in the plan 
planning no para just in case uh, makapag-offer ng discounts or makapag uh, minimize ng need ng human resources no pwedeng ma-delegate na yung ibang sports activities sa kanila um pwede nang magawa no para mas maayos no Okay and the next typology of sports tourists is according to Reeves and according to them there are six types of sports tourists and we'll go through them one by one and in describing the six types of sports tourists he identified some factors that differentiated each and that included decision making participation uh, the reason why they don't participate or wouldn't participate um, the group profile the lifestyle that they have and in relation to sports and uh, how much they spend for a sports tourism attraction or experience so the first one he identified was incidental and according to them unimportant yung decision making in relation to um uh going into sports attractions probably it's because of out of duty dahil it's so a part ng kanilang biniling tour no nung tour package nila and they would probably not participate if the activity that was assigned to them was not relaxing or holiday like because it's um generally a um tawag dito uh it's generally not their first idea to take a sports activity in the first place and their main goal for the tour is to relax and then um, the group profile would be most likely a family and uh, for them for them to participate they just feel like sports is significant but it's not something that they really have to do and therefore the spending that they would do for any sports related tourism expenditure is just minimal next we have the sporadic sports tourist um, for them, it's relatively important to look into sports attractions within our overall travel or tour package, but we will only participate if it's convenient, it's near our accommodation, it's near the other attractions that we were already planning to go to, and uh, basically we can just so, uh, put it off our itinerary if it's if it's not convenient or we are already tired or there are more other important um, attractions that we want to go to uh, the group profile could be friends and family and their lifestyle in relation to sports is non-essential and the spending is uh, minimal except if they like join like one big sporting event that they have to pay a big ticket for and then they just do it in uh, they just go for it because they feel it's convenient so they would do so Next, we have the occasional sports tourist, uh, and for this, it's uh, sometimes they determine that yes, for this specific travel, I'm going to go for a sports activity or sports a tourism attraction. Um, and for them, uh, sports activities is a welcome addition to the overall tourist experience. And probably one reason bakit hindi sila makakasali, even if it's available, is because probably it's already out of their time or out of their schedule and they have other commitments that they have to attend to. Um, usually, the group profile for this is often individual, specifically uh, business tourists who are out of business na and it's already for them doing leisure and, you know, uh, they could engage in sports like, for example, golf or other things. And um, conspicuous consumption is their lifestyle in relation to sports, meaning it's already part of their um, it's already part of their lifestyle to consume sports activities, and then sp and then they spend high on certain occasions, especially if they really like the sport that they're spectating or engaging in. The next type of sports tourist is the regular sports tourist, and the decision for them to go for a sporting activity is important and it is the significant part of their enjoyment when they go for a tour uh, probably one of the primary in itineraries that they have is to go for a sporting activity or spectation um, non-participation could be money kulang ng pera or wala ng time um, group profile may be an individual or a group uh, for them 
uh, important ang sport at health and they would do a considerable amount of spending for engaging in a specific sport in a specific tourist destination. Next, we have dedicated sports tourists. For them, very important that in that specific um, in that specific uh, tawag dito, tourism destination, they really have to go and find or go to a sporting attraction. It's central to the experience, their overall experience as a tourist in that specific destination. Uh, Non-participation due to unforeseen barriers like for example, may calamity or there's typhoon. Or just like what we had in the Sea Games before, no, may mga na-cancel because of typhoon. But the people who went here uh, really went to see sports. Pero hindi natuloy, hindi nakapag-participate kasi na-cancel because of sumabay yung bagyo. Uh, individuals and groups are like-minded in that group profile. Like for example, usually ito na yung magkaka-friends because of the Spartan or the marathon that they've attended to before. Uh, it's a def uh, sport and health is a defining element of you know their overall life and uh, they spend consistently no kasama na sa budgeting at savings nila for their lifetime ang pag you know engage in sports tourism uh, and they don't mind paying extremely high in relation to engaging in sports in a specific travel destination and lastly we have driven sports tourism um for them, it's very important, but they have little autonomy over, you know, what sporting game to go to because it's their profession. So, ito na yung mga Olympic athletes, professional athletes, no? Siyempre, um, the games are decided for them by the tournament or for whoever is handling them as, um, as professional um, athletes, no? And their participation is the sole reason why they go for that specific um, travel destination. So, pumunta sila dun sa area na yon just to go and do that sport. So, kung meron man siyang ibang itinerary within the days that he or she is in that specific destination, it's only just to train or to celebrate or to to go around whatever he needs to do there as an athlete. No, So, the non-participation would most likely be injury. So, na-injured siya kaya hindi siya makapag-participate. Uh, and then the group profile are elite groups, no? usually these are, you know, uh, yung coach, the athlete, the attendance, and the other part of the whole team. And uh, of course, the spending is extremely high even before traveling, but basically since it's a profession, it's externally funded. So, hindi siya masyadong issue. So, if you see um, the different types of sports tourists, you would notice that yung extent to which um, they are participating in an event is influenced by many factors and that was the basis for the classification. Another um, sports tourism classification is by Gammon and Robinson and according to them, there are four considerations in relation to um, categorizing a specific um, person who goes for tourism and sport. And these are motivation, engagement, and competitiveness in the given sports activity. So I kind of reimagined the whole um, categorization process and I made this um, X and Y axis. The Y axis basically looks into the extent of competitiveness of the sport that they are engaging or spectating in and then the type of motivation that they have in relation to um, engaging or spectating in the sport. So uh, basically, narinig nyo na rin ito from the previous lecture. Now, we have the sports tourism and the tourism sport. Now, the hard sport tourism group of people are the ones who are actively or passively participating in a very uh, competitive sporting event such as the Olympics, regional games, or the Grand Prix, for instance. And basically, um, they consider engaging in a specific uh, sporting activity, both as spectator or as a um, as an uh, player, as the primary motivation for their tour, you no, know, for their travel. And then we also have the soft sport tourism. It's a group of people whose participation is recreational um, instead of really competitive. So. Uh, low competitiveness tayo dyan. So, for example, skiing during the winter holidays for those who live in places na, you know, may winter, etc., um, etc. Et so, yun ay soft sport tourism. So, hard 
So, sport tourism, um, largely motivated by sport ang pag-travel nila. And if it's highly competitive, it's hard sports tourism. If it's low competitive, it's soft sports tourism. Okay, next we have the tourism sport. Basically, tur tourism sport goes to the low motivation area. Basically, um, the engagement in sport in a given travel destination is not the main thing that that these um, tourists are going for. So, the hard tourism sport says that sport as a tourism secondary motivation basically enriches the travel experience, but not the main thing. No? For example, sports cruises. No? So, Sport is part of the itinerary, but it's not the main thing that they go for, for the travel. And then, if it's purely incidental, meaning doon lang nila nakita in the... Doon na lang nila nalaman at na, 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 na pag decisionan that they would engage in the sport, doon lang nila discover yung sports activity when they're already there in the travel itinerary. And they incidentally put that in the itinerary, then that as, 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 as soft tourism sport. So, if it's an important secondary motivation, it's within the itinerary, but it's not the primary uh, primary um, consideration. It's hard tourism sport. If it's really not part of the itinerary at all, but when they get to the tourism destination, they were able to discover that such a sports attraction exists, and they include that incidentally into their itinerary, it's soft tourism sport. Now we get to the last classification and this time we are not classifying tourists, we're classifying tourism activities. No? And this is according to Stand, Even, and Denop in 1999. And there are five classifications according to them. Now the first classification is the sport activity holidays, meaning this is a specific sporting event that is really um, putting sports as the main feature of that attraction and we have of course single sport activity holidays such as skiing you know cycling and trekking uh so isa lang yung sport and then we also have multiple sport activity holidays sport camp so for us uh, uh, since this is a holiday hindi siya competitive sports hindi rin siya highly marketed uh, highly marketed sporting events so these are just you know for people to engage in um, instead of watch competitively or, you know, engage competitively. The next categorization is holiday sports activities, which basically uh, talks about um, activities that are um, more sports than recreation or holidays. In the first one, we have the um, organized holiday sports interest, like for example, um, golf, rafting cruise ship and sports activities so it means that the 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 activities are more of an organized sport and they are being engaged in and then we have more independent holiday sport activities which are you know adventure activities such as bungee jumping you no know? so it's lesser of a an organized sport or a professional sport but it's really more of an adventure tourism Next, we have passive sports on holiday. So this is the type of sports that uh, usually people go to uh, because they want to spectate, you know, a, a specific sport event. And we have the connoisseur observers who basically watches, you know, high-end elite sport games. And we have Olympic Games, Wimbledon, Stadium Tours, sports museums. And then we also have casual observers for smaller organized sports such as Thai boxing, Thailand, in Thailand, bullfighting in Spain. So nanonood lang sila ng mga very niche sports in a specific area. If you notice, the difference between the first two is that for the first two, um, these are active, actively participated in. This one, passive, no spectating lang siya. Next, we now look into when the sport tourism is done. The first three are done during holidays. Ibig sabihin, people really have to go off work uh, because of this. Uh, but there are also 
uh, active sports during non-holiday time. Ibig sabihin, they travel for uh, business purposes and then they have extra time to do um, tourism activities and they choose to do sports activities and they engage actively. That's active sports during non-holiday time. So, ibig sabihin, they did this in a work-related travel, hindi holiday, and they actively engaged in it. Like, for example, mag-golf ka in the middle of the business conference travel or uh, training camps. And then, yung, pag- yung kabaliktar na naman niya, if your goal naman during your leisure time at work when you traveled is just to spectate or watch, no, uh, or passively engage in it, uh, like for example, dragon boat racing, for example, anong nagkaroon kayo ng business meeting in Hong Kong, no, as an example of a passive sport during non-holiday time. So, in this specific video, we were able to talk about the many categorizations of a sports tourist and the many factors in which they are categorized. And we are also able to classify different sporting tourism events. Please take note that um, in the future lectures, we will be um, going back and forth to different classifications. So you have to remember that, okay, so we're talking about the classification of the NAP or we're classi- talking about the classification of this group of theorists. No, So uh, just so you know that these are all widely accepted. There's no like general, um, general, generally like one accepted lang. So lahat sila accepted. There's no singular thing that's upheld. No, but of course, um, for those who are collaborating, no, for example, certain public sectors are looking into sports tourism before an elite event. Dapat meron silang singular um, definition. Pero silang magsiset nun. So these are just some suggestions of scholars of sports tourism of how you can possibly um, differentiate or categorize your sports tourism market because it's important in the planning because each type of sports tourism based on a specific um, based on a specific factor will help you make decisions to increase the level of experience of sports tourism while they're here.